Right, welcome to Premier Presents. Today we have Dr. Arrest Marag. Arrest, thanks for joining us today. Thank you, Michael. It's a pleasure to be here. Eris is a longtime employee at Nike <clears throat> and an innovation specialist. He's been speaking with Premier for, for many years um, and is now uh, open to a lot more engagements. So we're looking forward to a lot more speaking engagements coming up from you, Eris. Thank you. <laughs> so, so tell me, what have you been up to these days? I retired from Nike about a year ago, and uh, since I uh, opened, I founded Innovate. Innovate is a, uh, an innovation consulting company that helps organizations develop innovation capabilities. We uh, inspire innovation through speaking engagements. We enable innovation through our uh, highly rated workshops, and we promote innovation uh, through uh, building a culture of innovation or in the culture of collaboration uh, in the organizations and with our clients. Uh, over here, there is no shortage of good ideas, and what we found is that uh, there was a need for more processes and methodologies, and with what we brought, the tools we brought, the approach we brought, uh, really helped our clients uh, become more successful and get more out of, uh, out of their uh, innovative ideas. Hmm. And so is this an extension from what you did at Nike? Like how, I guess, you know, maybe... Tell, tell the viewers what you did at Nike and I guess what, what you're doing now, how that's an extension of that. Absolutely. I was at Nike for almost 14 years and I can divide that time to three periods. Product innovation, brand initiatives and working with high level athletes. In my first period, I worked on uh, new product innovations, especially primarily with the global football and the women's groups. Those were small groups at the time that that decided that innovation could be a primary growth driver for them. So through a successful line of meaningful product innovations, it really helped those departments grow and become leaders in the marketplace. Um, after that period, I uh, was invited to have a day job and a night job, continuing working on product innovation, and in addition, join the Nike football leadership team where I had the, the task to lead brand initiative, unique brand initiatives and bridge the gap between product and brand innovation. Nike Football Plus was one of those initiatives. Hmm. And in my third period of Ni at Nike, I founded uh, a new group, the Athletes Performance Insight Group, where our task was to... Uh, to work with elite athletes, to analyze their performance. I had the privilege to work with more than 80 world-class athletes in that role, um, analyze their performance, get new insights, and uh, get new insights, improve their performance, and use data-driven innovation uh, in our line. So three periods, product innovation, brand initiatives, and um, working with world-class athletes, those three programs basically uh, created the uh, uh, game-changing entrepreneurships in at Nike, and of course inspired uh, my work today and inspired my uh, speaking topics um, and, and trying really to help groups and business people to turn passion into action. It also looks like it inspired some of your office decorations. Uh, it's an impressive, <laughs> impressive collection you have behind you there. Thank you. <laughs> so, and I think what's unique about your story, obviously, innovation is the key, but you, the way that you incorporate your messages of the athletes that you worked with into the business model, I think, is what the clients who have you respond the best to. Why don't you tell me about the, your, your most popular keynote topic? And we know there's a book getting written right now. Perhaps tell us a little bit about the book and how that's going to tie in uh, in the future. Yes, uh, one of the topics and the topic of the book is high performance lessons in business and sports. I worked with world class athletes and world class business executives. And when I worked with those athletes and analyzed their performance, I, I realized that they're all looking for a competitive edge. They're all doing something a little differently. And uh, similarly, Working with uh, a business executive, you see that they're very competitive, they're willing to work hard to be successful, they're trying constantly to build a strong team and look for a competitive edge. So not surprisingly, many of the metaphors used in the business room are driven from sports. The topic of uh, my book and, and, and the speak is how to apply 
sports lessons, lessons that are inspired by athletes, embedded in science, and delivered in business uh, into uh, the audience. So uh, I would say that uh, the idea there is to take all three and, and put them together into a really meaningful and helpful story. I'll give you an example. When I worked with Roger Federer, Roger Federer is one of my favorite athletes of all time. Uh, he won 17 Grand Slam uh, tennis matches. And, uh, and, and in my work, I worked with NBA champions, Super Bowl champions, uh, Champions League winners, hmm. tennis Grand Slam winners, Olympic gold medalists from the U.S., from China, uh, from Europe, from uh, South America. Roger was one of my favorites, hmm. I admit it. We were walking between two experiments, and I asked Roger about his game and what gives him the competitive edge, and I thought that he will talk about his technique and the ability to use all kinds of different shots, because I love biomechanics, and I thought that this is going to be the direction he'll go to. But what I noticed when I walked with him is that people came and talked to him and, and asked him questions, and he paid attention to each and every one of them. It doesn't matter if it was an executive or a research assistant. And, uh, and the lesson there is that if you pay attention to the cues, to the different cues and create a big picture, you can really create a competitive edge. Similarly, in science, um, in biomechanics, the beauty of biomechanics is the addition of forces. How can you can combine the forces of the big muscles and the small muscles to create the movement to get more out of your body? And... Uh, uh, in in business, I think one of the uh, the best examples is Nike Football Plus, where we took insights from the consumer, from performance, from the business place, from the brand, added them together to put those little pictures into one big scenario that created a much more meaningful uh, innovation. So it's inspired by Roger paying attention to the details and combining them into one big picture. It's embedded in, in science and also delivered in business. Wow. And your book will actually be discussing more than just one athlete. It's, each chapter will feature uh, a certain athlete and a business message. And I think, obviously, your keynote is going to be moving in that direction too. It's, it's an exciting keynote, that's for sure. Tell me, um, I really like your topic, Bridging the Gap. Tell me in, in, in 45 seconds about that topic. What, what do you think, you know, what, people, what the takeaway from that is going to be? Yes. Uh, as I mentioned, I, was, I had the privilege to do two jobs at the same time, working with <laughs> cross product and brand. Mm -hmm. And uh, the big idea there, the big idea that actually came through my sabbatical uh, was to move, to shift, a shift in thinking from delivering product innovation to complete performance solutions. It's much more meaningful for the athletes. And, uh, and that shift from product innovation to complete performance solutions that, in, that, that combines the product and a set of activities and services that comes with it uh, was really exciting. Hmm. When I spoke about that at uh, Harvard Business School, they found it so intriguing that they decided to publish uh, a two-part business case about it. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and it is one of the popular topics. It is a, a topic that uh, audience are really... Uh, um, it makes them very engaging and very, very popular mm -hmm. because the message there is a shift in thinking. It's a it's, it's much broader way to deliver meaningful innovations to consumers and to get them engaged. Yeah. Um, and you kind of touched on a little bit there. Tell me about your customization process. I, I've, seen, I've seen you speak and I know you bring people on the, on the stage and you do all kinds of fun things with the crowd, but tell me a little bit about your customization process, how that works and... Um, We'll go from there. Yes. Sure. I, I believe that uh, the customization process is a big factor in the success of an event. And therefore, I, I use it both in my workshops and in the speaking engagements. And therefore, I like to speak first with the event planner, then with the leaders of the event, understand the goals, understand uh, the audience, understand the nature of the event. And that helps me customize my talk to the audience, to the goals of the event, and uh, also, as you mentioned, uh, adjust and create an activity that will match the needs of the event. Activities on stage is, is, is a must. 
I enjoy doing them and, and they're very engaging for the audience as well. Oh, fantastic. Well, as you can tell, Arez is full of energy. He, a major part in, and I, he, he probably can't say this, but I can, a major part of the direction of the Nike Innovation Programs, Football Plus. I know they miss you, miss you greatly. Um, Arez, thank you so much for, for spending some time with us today. Uh, you can, if you want to dig a little deeper into Arez's speech topics, you can. We've broken his speech topics down into some more detail, his bio. Uh, but really appreciate your time and, and thank you. Thank you very much, Michael. It was my pleasure. All right.